Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Justin Lang, AKA Just Incredible. I'm an arts ambassador and creative arts teacher here at ACA Atlantic Center for the Arts. And now we're in our new web series, Arts and Emotions with Just Incredible. Ooh wee. So we're exploring how art can be used to promote healthy living. Now, if you have not seen our last web series for the past two years, make sure that you catch up on those and also make sure that you subscribe, you like, you share. And if there are any YouTube links, any articles, any information that you feel is on topic and would be helpful to this online discussion, make sure that you drop those in the comment section below. We definitely want to build a healthy, creative online community. So make sure that you subscribe, like, share, and drop those comments below. Now, today's topic is owning your story, owning your creative lane as an artist. So before we get into this disclaimer, I don't have all the answers in life. I don't know everything on every single topic we're about to discuss. I'm just sharing with you what I do know and information that I've gathered along the way so far. If there's anything that you believe is relevant, anything that I did not mention or anything that you believe would add to this growing, creative, healthy community that we're trying to build here online, make sure that you drop them in the comments. I, yeah. So today's topic, owning your story, owning your creative lane. First off, you need to find your lane. Everyone has a motivation on why they started to draw, why did they start to paint, why did they start to sing, dance, rap, direct, act, do whatever. What is your motivation? Some people's motivation could be they wanna impress a significant other. Some people's motivation is they want to impress their peers. They want to fit in, they wanna find a voice. Some people wanna do it for money because they just happen to be good at it. Some people wanna make changes. Some people want to deliver social justice messages out to the world. I know for myself, I first started off trying to rap and write poetry because I was not satisfied with my home life as a teenager, just like all teenagers. Oh, I hate my parents. Oh, I can't stand this. Oh, this girl broke up with me. Oh, I hate my life, yada, yada, yada. I did that. So started writing that way. And also there was a rap group at my high school at the time, I thought that they were super impressive. I thought they were highly talented. And I was like, dang, I would love to do that one day. So as I started to rap, and as I started to put songs together, I linked up with that team. Shout out to Drew, shout out to Conceited, shout out to Sean, Bacon, Bino, Hugo, Blockbusters, Crucial. Uh, all, 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 all of y'all, all of y'all, love you guys. I started to do that with my peers just to kind of fit in, find a voice, get some respect, and uh, also to kind of get girls is, is the way too. Wrote songs for my girlfriend, and now as I've evolved and spent some time in my artistic journey, some of my reasons change, and that's good, that's fine. Sometimes the first purpose that you had completely changes 10, 15 years down the line. So whatever your reason is, whether it's for just therapeutic purposes, whether it's catharsis to keep your sanity, have a positive outlet for all your negative emotions, whatever it is, that's a way to get closer to finding your creative lane. Next up, if you don't know your artistic lane, and your artistic story by now. I got a list of 15 things that would help you define your lane. These are 15 different ways you can find out who you are as an artist and as a creative. Number one, who or what do you love? Number two, who or what do you hate? Number three, who or what are you afraid of? Number four, who or what makes you angry? Number five, what confuses you in life? And when I say that, I mean, if you had a face-to-face -face conversation with God, something that's been irritating you the whole time, how come this, why doesn't, why doesn't this happen? Whatever confuses you in life, think about that. Number six, what do you want to heal from? Number seven, what things make you uncomfortable or what things make the people around you uncomfortable? Number eight, what pain or what trauma do you hate to talk about? Number nine, what causes are dear to your heart? 
Number 10, what cultures do you care about outside of your own? Number 11, what solutions and what aid do you believe that you can bring to the world? Number 12, if someone came to you and said, I will give you all the money in the world and I will solve all of your personal problems forever, if you fill in the blank, what are those things that you're like, oh heck no, I'll never do that. Even with all of that, even with all the money in the world and even with all of my personal problems taken care of, I won't ever do that. Number 13, what have your parents, family, and friends said about you consistently throughout your life? Some of that might be true. Number 14, what have coworkers consistently said about you? Or what have managers said about you as far as feedback and work evaluations, monthly evaluations, what have they consistently said about you? Some of that might be true. You may not like it, but some of it might be true. And number 15, what have classmates and teachers consistently said about you as far as feedback? Some of it may be true. Here's a bonus one. What have your haters said about you? Cause some of that might be true too. They may be helping you out in disguise, by the way. Oh God. Number two, study the greats, man. Study the greats. All great artists that you have loved who've had a long career, a successful career, a career spanning decades, they have their own lane. They've embraced their own lane. They have embraced their story, their struggle, and they have certain things about them that are signature. For example, you got Quentin Tarantino. There's just a certain way that he just does his movies. It just is what it is. He has that stamp. Martin Scorsese, one of my favorite directors. Eminem has a certain style. He has a certain lane that he talks about. He talks about addiction, pop stars. He's king of diss records. He is political. He talks about just foolishness sometimes. He talks about his own personal life, relationships, his friends. He talks about hip hop. He has a lot of different lanes, but he stays true to that consistent on almost every album you're gonna hear, if not all, at least half of all of those topics consistently in almost every single album. Denzel Washington, as far as acting, one of my favorite actors. He is, in my opinion, the king of nuances. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, Denzel, he just plays the same character. He's just a good guy all the time, da, da, da. Uh, that could be your opinion. In my opinion and from my point of view, he is the king of nuances. I'll tell you four totally different good guys, totally different nuances in every single movie. Just the attention to detail. One, John Q. Two, Remember the Titans. Three, The Preacher's Wife. Four, Fallen. You can throw in out of time as well. Let's just say a kind of bad guy, but good guy, man on fire, equalizer. As far as good guys, another one, Ricochet. Another actor who I believe is another king of nuances is Robert De Niro. Comedy, drama, and organized crime, those are his lanes, but he has nuances in every single one of them. Angela Bassett, one of my favorite actors of all times versatility that's her thing that's her lane from tina turner to american horror story there's none like her none alicia keys one of my personal favorite musicians songwriters singers she's just she's just another world another world queen of the ballads the performance penmanship forget about it also one of my favorites tupac shakur poet motivational speaker actor rapper, community activist, a lot of different lanes as far as just who he is as a person. And then within his rapping, within his art, a lot of major themes. You're talking, he's heavily political, spiritual. His big thing is duality. He likes to talk about him just being a party guy and just, you know, braggadocious and talking about money and just living life to the fullest and just being, you know, one of the elites but also he's super sensitive to people who are living in injustice, living in poverty. He's always shining light on that. He talks about uh, being a saint, being a sinner. Extremely talented, study the greats, they embrace their lane, and that's why they have longevity in their discipline.
next up, got to do the work. Do it. Show your work. Do your homework. You can't be an artist if you don't produce any art. You got to do it. As Shia LaBeouf would say, do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! You got to do the work. Do it. Once you've figured out what your lane is and what your creative story, your uniqueness as an artist, you have to bash those subjects in as much as you can. Keep on writing on that topic over and over and over and over again. Just like the greats, some of them have produced and directed in the same genre of movies, dozens of TV shows in the same genre, all in the same lane. You have to make your mark in that lane and the only way to make that mark you have to dig deep and put in the work on all of those topics you just got to do it for those who feel like oh you know I, those grace I, I i can do that i can do that okay cool do it you take the time to actually write you take the time to go into the studio you take the time to borrow the cameras to do whatever you got to do get the lighting in you pay the money out of pocket you get your stuff copyrighted you actually go and put your stuff online and market it and everything you take the time being an artist is easier said than done you gotta put in the work bro you gotta do it you can't cheat the grind you can't cheat the work you have to show your work do your homework put in the work don't And last but not least, understand that there are pros and cons to your specific lane, to your artistic journey. There are pros and cons. Don't believe the hype, don't believe the lies. What are the lies? Let me tell you. Here's a lie, nobody's gonna relate to my story. Wrong. There are almost 8 billion people here in this world. We all share the human experience. We are connected way more than you think that we are. There are so many people that connect and identify with your story that you will never meet. And just because you don't see them, just because you don't have a conversation with them does not mean that they're not there. Just because they don't tell you does not mean that they don't appreciate your art and they don't connect with your art in some way, shape or form. So that's a lie. Here's another lie. Hey, well, my story, you know, it's just kind of hard because everybody's doing it. I hear you, still a lie. I was working with one of my creative art students highly impressive artists they said well my story it's a selective thing it's almost kind of new and it's you know the market is really small so i'm gonna get overshadowed by people who are the majority in that lane in that discipline when i'm telling my story the majority won't connect with it so since the majority won't connect the majority artist their lane is easy and I said, actually, no, it's not true. If there's more people in your industry or more people in your lane, it's actually kind of harder to stick out, but it's easier to stand out when you're amongst a whole lot of people looking the same or sounding the same. So I told them, imagine being at the Super Bowl, everyone's wearing a blue shirt, but you're the only person in the middle wearing a red shirt. You stand out, all eyes are on you. That's a good thing. So it's easy as long as you are big enough to see, meaning as long as you are amplified, you're powerful, you have confidence in your voice doing your discipline, it'll be easy to stand out. In my opinion, someone in that lane, someone wearing a blue shirt trying to stick out, they have to work extra harder in order for people to see them and recognize them. So they either gotta go to like a super, super, super powder blue, baby blue, or they have to go to a deep, dark, navy blue just to stand out. In my opinion, they have to put in some more work just to stand out because they're the majority. It's harder for them. Uh, everyone has their pros and cons. Here was a common lie in the mid early 2000s as far as rappers. If I'm not on some street, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, Bullets Everywhere, Flying on the Album Cover, Tupac, Thug Life, To The Day I Die. If I'm not on that, then as a rapper, I won't be embraced. What I have to talk about doesn't matter and I'm not relevant. That's a lie. 
there are many rappers who are not on some gangster rap, they're not on some NWA, they're not about stories about broken homes, they talk about positive interactions with family, they're motivational, they're inspirational. Those artists still have platforms, those artists still make money, those artists are still relevant till today. Maybe in a different sector, maybe in a different setting, maybe they're not at the same nightclubs as like a Lil Boosie or something like that, performing or, or doing their concerts, but they're still relevant in some lanes. Someone likes it, someone enjoys it. Now, when it comes to myself, Just Incredible, I have many different lanes and many different topics that's a part of my artistic journey, my story. And that ranges from love, relationships, God, spirituality, my faith, motivation, eroticism oh don't ho, 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 ho. just wait for it uh politics mental health and a couple more so here's a piece that i believe highlights a couple of those topics what's a miracle it's believing the impossible, defeating all your obstacles. Like March 25th, me leaving the hospital. Or January 1st, 2007, handguns in my face, point blank, not on my waist. Or 2010, when cops followed me. Wrong identity, bout to put an end to me. Or when mom and pop stopped me from jumping off the balcony. Ten stories when the devil hounded me. Every time that I breathe, it's a miracle. So this is literal, physical, or spiritual. From scraping couch change to buy groceries to me and my wife taking trips overseas. I'm real rap raw, nothing changed, still added. Hard to kill, balls of steel, feels classic. Nah, still matic. Smart skill practice, hard will passion. God still has some miracles. This is just something extra. When you accept your role as an artist, when you embrace your journey as a creative, you cannot be replaced with another artist. You cannot be replaced by a machine. This road is tough from time to time, but it's definitely worth it. The work needs to be done. People need to see you, people need to hear you, people need to feel your art now. And not just now, when you're dead and gone, they still need to feel it. It has that impact, that's the beauty of art that it lasts lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. People can experience your art beyond the grave. Now, as we wrap up, number one, make sure that you find your lane. Number two, study the greats. Number three, do the work. Number four, understand that there's pros and cons to your story, to your lane. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the lies. Again, my name is Justin Lang, AKA Just Incredible. I'm an arts ambassador and creative arts teacher here at ACA, Atlantic Center for the Arts. We're in Heathrow today. So, hey, H-Town. I, I, I don't know what you guys do out here. I really don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, um, this is our new web series, Arts and Emotions with Just Incredible. Make sure that you subscribe, that you like, that you share, and if you find any relevant information, make sure that you drop that down in the comment section. I'm not playing. Five. That boy. Let me find download my album, follow me on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> that boy, what? That boy shooting, what?